Hello everyone and welcome to my gecko room tour. State Crested. I have always been an animal lover since I was little. I have always been allowed to have quite the plethora and collection of pets. Uh, my parents were super supportive and that has kind of trailed into my adult life where I'm still incredibly passionate about pets. I rescue some um, as well as I breed uh, crested geckos. I'd love to show you guys. It's been kind of a labor of love. I've really taken a lot of time to develop this room. A lot of finances, uh, blood, sweat, and tears, um, and just kind of figuring out what worked for me, what worked for my pets, um, and also to give them a really high standard and quality of care. Um, I was doing bin cages for my cresteds for a while there, but it got to a point that it was really hard to like unstack all of the bins and I felt like I was jostling my geckos around all the time and that they didn't really feel like comfortable. Um, so I wanted to get to a point that I felt like my room was a display room, that people could come in here and not feel intimidated by the number of animals that I keep. Um, that they could enjoy them visually when they you know, come in instead of having to pull out a tub, unclip the lid, and then show them my geckos. I wanted them to be visible. So I guess that's enough of me talking. Let's just get into it. So I figure we will start our gecko room tour just going around the room from the left to the right. Uh, this is the closet. I keep a lot of my storage boxes up there, my shipping boxes, as well as my storage containers, like six quarts for my grow outs. I have a plant that I'm probably going to kill because I'm not um, good at keeping plants alive. Um, and then this is my guinea pig CNC tank. I rescued these two a couple of weeks ago and we're back. We are convincing them with food. <laughs> Here they are. So, oh, the little one, the little white one, I believe I'm going to name Charlie. Georgie and Charlie. Um, <laughs> they're adorable. Hi, Georgie. They are still warming up to me. I really hope that they warm up even more and are kind of open with being out. But that's Georgie and Charlie. Now, when I slide the doors to the other side of the closet, this is where I keep my isopods, my springtails, and my dubia roaches. Um, these are my isopods. I keep springtails, rubber duckies, awaneries. Those are powder oranges and dairy cows. So I keep them uh, to keep my tanks bioactive, but I only use the dairy cows and the powder oranges for that because they breed so quickly. These awaneries and rubber duckies are just a personal collectible that I'm hoping I successfully breed. And then a very, very, very prolific springtail culture. I use that to seed everything in my room, really. Um, and then a dubia roach colony. Okay, over here is my hatchling rack. I just moved two geckos out of it and I have 11 eggs incubating and I believe two that were just laid last night that I need to go on a hunt for. Um, so it will be filled up, but on top of it is where I keep my little Regius um, orange phase jumping spider. There she is. That is my little female. Can't really get the best shot of her where she's at, but she's quite adorable and my dog has opinions right now and is barking at us. So she's a little sling and she just ate last night. She has a little uh, thing of dubias in there um, and shares with the geckos. So now on to my little Juveniles and hatchlings. I've got some grow outs from other breeders, mainly other breeders. A couple of super cool dry colors in here. And two of my own hatching hatchlings. Let's see if we can't find it. Oh, there's a little one. Hi, little one. 
was hatched like two weeks ago. What am I doing? Before I bred her. We've got a couple cool ones. This is a really cool tri-color white wall. And then this is a male that will be for sale come fall when I have shipping weather. He is also tri-color, but lower white. So that is the hatchling rack. And now moving on to my hamster cage. This is an Ikea Detoff. It gives about 950 square inches of space for a hamster. I have a little black and white Syrian. Um, I obviously will not be able to show the actual little one because he is sleeping right now. Moving on from the hamster is this corner of six 10 gallon converted aquariums and one plant that I'm keeping alive. <laughs> so in here I have an extreme harlequin from gecko junkies. It's a male, almost breeding weight. We'll see if I can get it up to weight um, this season. Insanely pretty if she wasn't hiding out. <laughs> She's got a crazy, crazy fin stripe. Hello, girl. Um, also, thank you, little fruit flies. Okay, I'll put you back. Uh, moving down. This is my tricolor grow out. What are you doing? I was having a nap, lady. Please let me go back to it. Um, oh, here is one of my favorites. My really exciting grow outs. Nail from Zenjex. He's gonna have a little panic. He is uh, just crazy white when he fires up. Maybe gonna go even whiter. I wouldn't call him a tricolor though yet. Maybe, if I'm lucky. <laughs> but that is that for this. And let's move to the big center uh, rack where I have two plants that I'm killing. Let's go back and note that. Um, and then I have my big breeder females and some of my larger males. Um, this is obviously a gorgeous <laughs> lily white female named Dreamcatcher. She is almost breeding. She'll be actually probably paired this month. Um, and here I have a huge Harlequin that's been paired to No Better Gecko's um, Overachiever Lily White. Well, she is huge, but hiding. She has laid two clutches this season so far. This is my huge tricolor male. He now fires up looking more Harlequin, but I promise he's crazy tricolor. Out of Cotswolds, Adam. Here is a tricolor female named Small Talk. She is almost breeding weight. Can I see your side? Pretty girl. She is probably my favorite female in my entire herd, gang, group, whatever we want to call them. She's stunning. Um, moving down here, she is trying to lay. She is a tricolor, but like with very extreme white spotting from Paris reptiles. She's fired down, but she fires up very, very black. So she is trying to lay, so we're not gonna bother her too much. Moving into here is a older female tricolor that again, color wise only is a Harlequin now. Um, she is super cute. She is the mom of the babies that I showed you in that hatchling rack. And in here is a huge female named Blur. Oh, come on door, cooperate. Uh, she's usually, there she is. She is also a tricolor that does not fire up dry anymore. Huge lady who oh, has been denying all of the men this season. So that's exciting. We're gonna keep trying though. So, wait, here, here to grow outs. You can see that little one in there. 
drippy, drippy um, high white from Emerald City Crusteds. Down in here, you can just see her tail. Oh, her actually became a boy. Um, whoa! Well, I have failed. I have failed me. I guess this tank doesn't get to be closed anymore. So, this is my male, Lily White. I'm gonna have to get you a new door. Very sorry. Much sorry. So, that was fun. Moving on to the final rack. It's a mismatch mod podge of things. Um, this is an extreme Harlequin female from Pangea. She is also very doll spotty. She probably will be for sale after she breeds once this season. Um, so I can get some extremes out of her. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find him. Well, actually I will. He in here is a gorgeous pinstripe male named Empire who Blur has decided to deny, but he will hunt my hand happily. Um, we'll try again soon. Three of my grow outs. This is a Harlequin pinstripe. We've got a really cool yellow developing, um, just a lot of white. And then here I have a tricolor female, but I can show a photo of her. She is pretty. And then let's talk about this. This was the gorgeous setup I made for my hog nose, Carvin, and she stopped eating in it. So now, Carvin <laughs> resides in here. Hi Carvin. What are you doing? She's in Exanthic. She's like eight months old. Eating really well. It's feeding night. She's ready. She can't tell. Waiting for her fuzzy frozen thought, thank goodness. But that is Garvin. She has decided she doesn't want her really big, nice <laughs> closure. Wants a bin. Uh, the rest is storage, extra stuff. I'm gonna have to fix that door. Uh, I do have some other videos coming out after this of how I set up these iHeartGecko conversion kits, um, my like tips and tricks on that. So I'll be doing a hamster video, a guinea pig video. Um, I'll probably be doing my breeder females, breeder males, like grow outs, sale gecko, like all those videos will come trailing through when I get some time. Um, but I hope you at least enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed seeing it. This is like real life, how people keep it. I hope that my channel moving forward will just be really real with y'all. Um, give you like a really good idea of the struggles, but also the triumphs and the fun of keeping geckos and keeping kind of this many pets. So if you see this, don't immediately think this is something you want to do. It's a really big commitment. It's hard to travel um, and it just takes up a lot of your evening. Uh, but it is also super rewarding and it's how I love to spend my time. Um, but I hope that you click subscribe and like. Um, leave a comment, what's your favorite morph or maybe something that you want to see in the future from me. Favorite gecko you saw, even though you only saw a couple. Um, and then yeah, just let me know what you thought. Um, and I'll catch you next time.